I was a student from from Côte d'Ivoire, and I was studying in the in France. And one of my master's thesis was on plantation economy in Côte d'Ivoire. This is when I found his book, one of his seminal books, The Development of Capitalism in Côte d'Ivoire. Since then, he had been an intellectual mentor. And then eventually, in the 1980s, when I was a, a professor, I uh, attended several meetings of CODESRIA and the Association of African Women for Research and Development, AFAD, or AWOD, both in Dakar. This is when we met physically for the first time. And since then, every time I go to Dakar, if he's in town, I have to pay a visit to him. Even if I saw him in the meeting, I had to go to visit him separately to discuss. And he was always generous with his time. And eventually, I became president of Comparative and International Education Society in the United States, responsible for an annual conference, which I entitled Ubuntu, Imagining a Humanist Education Globally. And I asked him to serve as the keynote speaker. He agreed, although he said he would not go to the United States, but we arranged through teleconferencing. He gave the most powerful, most powerful, inspiring uh, keynote on uh, cognitive capitalism. So we're working on two projects at the moment, three actually. One is the publication of a special issue of a journal that I contributed to create called Bandung, Journal of the Global South. And uh, the paper that Professor Amin delivered in 2015 as a keynote and a few others are part of a special issue that he and uh, another colleague uh, are organizing to publish. He urged me last year when I saw him, make sure you publish it soon. I didn't realize what was going on. And the second project is that he was to come to Johannesburg. I, I although I'm in the United States, I'm also, I have a position at the University of Johannesburg as distinguished visiting professor in a center that bears the name of an, another great African scholar, uh, Professor Ali Mazrui. And so he was to come to serve as a keynote speaker at the conference. It was uh, postponed because one of the co-organizers passed away also of cancer. And it was postponed to July and eventually to October. So, and this is what has happened. The last project we're working on is um, a major project called uh, Generation of African Scholars and African Higher Education Institutions. And he was going to be our first uh, scholar to interview, to give us his insight about the different stages, the different historical moments of African scholarship. So, I had to come to pay my honor to him because it's very untimely. We saw him almost, although he is a human being, for us he would be there forever. But we came to this realization that the human condition doesn't make exception. It's very sad, but uh, we have the responsibility to at least address a species of his thought, because there's no way, there will not be another Samir Amin. But we all have the capacity to at least take to one little step further an idea, an aspect. So this is uh, why I'm here. And I, I visited them last year. Uh, I came to a conference, not a conference, a committee meeting at UNESCO in July 2017, 
and I visited them in their home here in Paris. He, Isabel, and I, we spent a wonderful time together. And uh, he, he doesn't like material things, but I know he likes certain African shirts, uh, blue with indigo. So I brought him one of them. And this is when I, I told my husband, no matter how great this man is, no matter his age, sometimes he acts like a little child. So when I gave him, he wrapped it and put it and said, Isabel, look at me. Uh, this, this was a precious moment we spent together. And the next time I saw him was yesterday. It's my story. Very sad. After the cemetery, I went home in the hotel. I needed to, the time to cry. To cry. Because it's very, very difficult. Thank you for giving me this moment because I didn't, um, they planned only one hour for the speeches, two to three. You can't do that for Samir Amin. Too many people wanted to, to give their story of how they connected to him. So I was among those who didn't have a chance to speak. So I, it really means a lot that you're giving me this time. So thank you.